Be honest. When was the last time you thought about your current business insurance policy? If your existing business insurance policy is renewing on autopilot each year without checking out Zensurance, you're probably spending more than you need. That's why you need to switch to low-cost coverage from Zensurance before your policy renews this year. Zensurance does all the heavy lifting to find a policy, covering only what you need, and policies start at only $19 per month. So if your policy is renewing soon, go to Zensurance.com and buy your policy online in just a few minutes. Zensurance. Mind your business. Céline Dion. My dream to be international star. Could it happen again? Could Céline Dion happen again? I'm Thomas Leblanc, and Céline Understood is a four-part series from CBC Podcasts and CBC News, where I piece together the surprising circumstances that helped manufacture Céline Dion, the pop icon. Céline Understood, available wherever you get your podcasts. Frequency Podcast Network. Stories that matter, podcasts that resonate. Every economist on edge. Fine living costs. The real estate market is showing an erosion. Canada's economic struggles. Value of the loony against the greenback. And rising unemployment. Canada's economy is sliding dramatically. Navigating this economy has never been more confusing or frustrating. And we are here to help with that. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings, and this is Today in This Economy, where we keep you informed about what the latest economic news means for you. You may have seen headlines recently about the September jobs numbers from Statistics Canada. The big headline is that employment rose in this country by 47,000 jobs in September, while the unemployment rate fell 0.1 percentage points to 6.5%. But that doesn't tell the whole story, because at the same time that we were gaining 47,000 jobs, the labor force participation rate was falling 0.2 percentage points to 64.9% in September. Now, those are a lot of numbers, and they're intended to show you the big picture of the Canadian job market, but I wanted to understand how that big picture impacts people who may be seeking a job right now, or even people who are currently holding down employment and wondering if they can leverage this labor market for that raise and promotion they've been waiting for. In order to do that, I'm sitting down with Emily Durham, a Toronto-based career coach and the host of the Straight Shooter Recruiter podcast. Hello, Emily. Hello, thank you so much for having me. And you know I love to talk numbers, so I'm excited for us to dive in. Well, let's start with the numbers then. Um, Full-time employment went up, job participation is down. Uh, Give us those numbers in a little bit of detail and tell us uh, what they reflect about the state of the Canadian job market right now in October of 24. Absolutely. So first thing I want to say is we're trending positive. I don't want to say we should be happy dancing, but we can definitely start to shimmy. So basically what all of these numbers mean is really interesting. So employment going up is super positive. We've actually seen almost 47,000 new jobs be created in the last couple of months. That's nearly double what we've seen over the course of the summer. So big thumbs up there. What's interesting though, is if we look at that number in a vacuum, we're actually losing a lot of really important context. You mentioned that participation is down. So job participation is referring to all of the people who are able to work, so of working age, 15 years or older, who are either seeking employment or are actively working. So everyone who's engaging in the job market, that number is actually down. So what that tells us is even though we have a surplus of jobs being created, that tends to signal that we're still in some economic turbulent times. Um, Typically, when we see job participation rates dip, it's because the job market is so so tricky that people self-select out and find other ways to sustain their lifestyle. And people often will take breaks from seeking employment because the market is so tricky. Another data point that's kind of furthering this and kind of telling us we're not quite out of the woods just yet is the employment rate. So the employment rate is the percentage of people who want to work, who are eligible to work, who are actually working. And that number actually hasn't been increasing. That also saw a slight dip. And that is typically pointing to the fact that again, all of those roles that we've created, which is fantastic, big 47,000, isn't actually keeping up with our increased population, particularly Gen Z and Gen Alpha. 
So in context, then, when you look at these numbers uh, going back a year or so, I know you said trending a little bit positive. Maybe we can shimmy a bit. How does this track? Is this a turnaround, the beginning of one, a continuation of a trend? Uh, give us the background. Yeah, it's a great question. And to be honest, if I were to give you a, like a definitive, this is what the future holds, I would have to sit somewhere with a crystal ball. So none of us truly know where this is taking us definitively. But what we do know is that this is a slight positive. We did not see job creation um, at this rate about a year ago. So that is definitely trending positive. But if we look at what economists are saying, there's still question marks around the dip in participation and that continued dip in the employment rate. I don't think it's cause for major alarm, but what I would say, in my opinion, is this is the continuation of a pretty steady trend of this job market being pretty stinking rough. So although we are seeing positive trends, I don't think we're going to start to see fruits of our labor or that pre-pandemic job market popping up for the next at least couple of quarters. So if I'm looking for a job right now, then uh, what should I take away from this? And what should I be doing in my search to capitalize on whatever I can learn from this data? Absolutely. So if you are hunting for your dream job right now, first of all, don't panic. This isn't bad news. We've been there, done that. We we will bounce back from it, the tricky job market that we're in. First of all, you need to understand the challenges that you're feeling in your job hunt. It's not you. It's the market. So give yourself a little bit of grace. But tangibly, what you're going to have to understand is that there are more job seekers than jobs available. So what that means for you is having the perfect resume is no longer enough. Applying to 1,200 jobs unfortunately, isn't enough. Everybody has the quote unquote perfect application package in a world of chat GPT and AI. What's going to set you apart isn't what you know, it's who you know. This is the time for you to be going deep on networking, go to industry events, identify mentors, ask for referrals. The challenge isn't having a strong application package to open, it's getting your application package to open as a direct result of the sheer volume of applicants. So go absolutely like bananas when it comes to building your brand and getting to know people who can help you get a foot in the door. You mentioned AI there. I've heard a lot. I haven't been looking for a job uh, in quite some time, fortunately, but everything I read about AI and recruiting has me terrified for when that comes up and the idea of trying to get recognized in that world. Can you explain a little bit for those of us who have been uh, not searching for a job for a while, how it's changed that recruitment process? Absolutely. So there's two major changes that we're seeing. Number one is how recruiters are using their applicant tracking systems, which is the system where your resume is going after you applied. And the second major change is how you are able to streamline your job search. So the headline, in my opinion, is AI isn't scary. It's only scary if we don't understand how to use it. So if you're you know, not necessarily looking for a job, but you're curious as to how this may impact your job search in the future, AI gives us an amazing opportunity to tailor our resume resumes, customize our cover letters. It automates the minutia, the stuff we don't want to deal with, so you can get more high quality applications out there faster. The challenge is we're all doing this. So everybody has a really strong application uh, package, which is why being able to build relationships is now even more important. What is a little bit more challenging is with the rise of AI, we're actually seeing smarter applicant tracking systems. So these systems are now able to pick up on slightly more keywords. They're able able to suggest what candidates are a great fit. My kind of word of caution, though, before anybody hits the panic button is at the end of the day, companies are never going to entirely rely on AI to assess whether or not a candidate is correct. AI is built by people and people many times are built by bias. So it's so important that there's multiple layers of evaluation to an application. So don't panic. What I would say is the key takeaways are networking is more important than ever. And yes, maybe there are systems that are going to um, take a final or tooth comb into your resume, but you also have AI on your side to make sure you have a smart resume that's going to um, get read by those systems. Okay, so if I am already employed, and this is the time of year that you're about to have your year-end conversations, um, let's say I'm looking for a promotion or a raise, how does the recent context of the labor market matter to me in that situation? 
It's a good question. And this is a bit of um, a complicated one. And sometimes I think I have a hot take on this is the job market is always going to be in flux. Um, what this means is there's probably a lineup of 100 people who want your job. But if your employer is going to punish you for asking for a raise, for asking for additional opportunity or promotion, and I hear this a lot where my clients are scared if they ask for a raise, their employer is going to fire them because they're too expensive and they'll hire one of the hundreds of others that want their job. In most places, that is illegal. And that is also unbelievably unethical. So although nothing exists in a vacuum, if you are gunning for that next opportunity or that opportunity to grow your career, what's happening with the external talent market shouldn't be at the forefront of your employer's mind. They shouldn't be thinking, who can I hire to do more for less money? That That's not the mindset. And if that's the employer you're at, I implore you, let's get you to start applying. Um, the market is hard, but it is never impossible. The only thing that I would say to be mindful of is with this kind of economic turbulence, particularly that we see in this participation rate being dipped down, usually that's a sign money might be tight. So maybe you're not getting that 7% raise, you're getting that 4.5%. That's where I think we just have to understand what our um, like minimum rate we're willing to accept is before we walk away from an employer. Budget is something that I think will be impacted. But if your employer is going to use kind of the tricky job market as ammo to make you shrink your expectations, that is not a healthy workplace. Let's get you out of there. How do you go about negotiating a promotion or a raise in this market when, you know, to your point, some employers will point out like money is tight out there, the job market is tight, uh, we don't have the money for raises this year, et cetera, et cetera, because I know a lot of people are probably going to hear that this year, like it or not. It's true. And, you know, we've been hearing that for the last couple of years. Um, there's a couple things that we need to think about, again, because nothing exists in a vacuum. The first is the right way to ask for a raise is always going to be the right way. It should never be a surprise to your leader, to your boss. You should be having ongoing career conversations to make sure your performance is tracking, actively asking for feedback on how you're going to get to that next level, either with your title or with your finances. So it's an ongoing conversation. When it comes to your year end discussion to say, hey, we're my money at. This is where we have a, a candid chat and we lead with humility, especially in the context of this job market. I always recommend people start off by thanking your employer for the opportunities to learn, yada, yada, whatever it is. You level set and say, I know the market is tight. Here are some of the things that I've delivered and leave it with an open-ended question. I don't know what our budgets are looking like, but is there anything we could do or talk about in terms of bumping up my base pay? And you leave it at that. Silence is the most powerful negotiation tool. In this market, you don't want to come in and say, you know, Susie from down the hall got a 10% raise, where's mine? What we do is we leave it open-ended and we let your employer show us the best that you can do. Um, and again, silence is the most powerful tool for negotiation. When do you know when it's time to walk away in this situation? What if you leave that open-ended question out there and the company comes back with, sure, here's a 1.5%. Oh, it's so hard. And it's it's a very personal um, answer. And this is where, again, I may have a bit of a hot take on popular opinion. I believe even if you occupy your dream job at your dream salary and you love your boss, never stop interviewing, especially when we go through dips in the job market. It is so powerful to know how you're getting priced externally, what companies are interested in you. Never stop interviewing. Because if you do run into this case where you know it's three or four quarters in a row, you haven't gotten a raise, but surprise, you keep getting getting more work, suddenly that job offer you got a couple weeks ago, yeah, it's, it's looking attractive. It keeps your options open. If that's something maybe we haven't done, A, let's start doing that. B, I think it's um, important for you to know what matters most for you in your personal life. Your employment and your finances are unbelievably personal. I know many people who have made the deliberate decision to save their money and quit their job and then take some time to look for a new role. I'm a big believer in it's easier to find a job when you already have one. So my personal kind of rule of thumb is the lack of ability to get new opportunity and a bump in your salary consistent. Consistent for me means about a year. If yes, that means things are not going to take a positive turn. And if they do, do you want to be at the same salary two years in a row? Inflation continues to rise for the most part. And if your salary hasn't, consider that a pay cut. And that's the mindset you need to adopt. So rule of thumb, if you're feeling stuck, if it's 12 months, you're seeing no progress, no change, it's, it's time to start looking. With that in mind, I know you said you don't have a crystal ball, but uh, looking at these numbers in the previous context, 
What are you thinking about trends in the labor market over the next several months? What would you expect to see, maybe? It's a good question. So there's a couple of things. The first is the dip in the participation rate, even though it has been pretty steadily declining over the last couple of months, doesn't really panic me. This data was also collected in early fall. This is when students go back to school. So people are going to self-select out of the process. So I think we're going to see that participation rate go up. My concern, I would say, is I don't see our rate of new job creation outpacing the rate of people ready to work. And there's a whole bunch of different factors um, that play into that. And one of those is layoffs. I don't think we've seen the end of the big tech layoffs. Um, like we've seen a lot of these return to work mandates. Here's looking at you, Amazon. Amazon, you know, called folks back into the office five days a week, gave them very limited notice. And then in that same press release said, oh, by the way, we're actually going to be thinking a little bit about our organizational structure, aka what that really means between the lines is if you don't show up to the office five days a week, you're on the chopping block. That's a really pretty way to cover up a layoff. I think that's what we're going to start seeing is return to work um, being used as a tool to dismiss people. And again, I don't mean to scare you at all. None of this needs to be, you know, terrifying, anxiety inducing information. It's just things that we keep in the back of our minds so that when we hear certain language and we see our employers doing certain things, we can say, "Mm, okay, this is something I need to be aware of. My concern with these layoffs and these hidden layoffs is I actually think that job creation rate um, isn't going to be as steady over time, especially as we head into these layoff seasons, which unfortunately tends to be January. Um, So I do think that's something that's um, not keeping me up at night. But again, if you are in an employer where you know there's rumors of return to work, be very thoughtful about the language your employer is using right now. This has been so thorough and helpful. Emily Durham, the host of the Straight Shooter Recruiter podcast, which you can find wherever you get your podcasts. Emily, thank you so much for this. Thank you. That was Today in This Economy. And if you have an idea for an episode or a personal finance question, we want to hear from you. To get in touch with us, email hello at itepod.ca. Or you can call us at 416-935-5935 and leave us a voicemail. But if you'd like us to play your voicemail on the show, you got to tell us that because we won't run your audio without your permission. This episode was produced by Robin Simon with sound design by Matt Kesselman. Stephanie Phillips is our showrunner. Mary Jubrin is our audience development lead. Diana Kay is our business manager. And I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings, your host and your executive producer. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Be honest. When was the last time you thought about your current business insurance policy? If your existing business insurance policy is renewing on autopilot each year without checking out Zensurance, you're probably spending more than you need. That's why you need to switch to low-cost coverage from Zensurance before your policy renews this year. Zensurance does all the heavy lifting to find a policy, covering only what you need, and policies start at only $19 per month. So if your policy is renewing soon, go to Zensurance.com and buy your policy online in just a few minutes. Zensurance. Mind your business. Céline Dion. My dream to be international star. Could it happen again? Could Céline Dion happen again? I'm Thomas Leblanc, and Céline Understood is a four-part series from CBC Podcasts and CBC News, where I piece together the surprising circumstances that helped manufacture Céline Dion, the pop icon. Céline Understood, available wherever you get your podcasts.